Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome back to another video. If you're watching in continuation, then no, it, it's okay. So welcome back and I'm really happy that you have shared so much of the series on the LinkedIn, on Twitter. I'm really super thankful for you for doing that. There are only a handful of people who actually promote the educational content and you're one of them. Thank you so much. So I've decided that I'll continue this series further on and I'll walk you through with more scenarios where you can understand Next.js in a little bit more depth and you can enjoy that. Now, one scenario that we have already gone through is a full stack application using the Next.js. We built our own APIs, we send it up all in the MongoDB and work with that. Now, another scenario is that maybe your backend is already cooked up, maybe in another language, or maybe you're using already cooked up backend. Now, your, your backend might be in fast API or maybe in the Spring Boot, so you'll get a lot of idea that how to handle these scenarios. So I'll be using an already cooked up backend, which is known as AppRite. And AppRite is 100% open source. You can deploy it on your own servers or you can use their cloud. I prefer to use their cloud. It's easy to set up. So in this entire series, uh, not series, but a couple of videos that it will take, I'll walk you through with one such application. So let me first show you the application so that in case you want to try it before me, you can go ahead because you have a lot of knowledge now. So let me show you what we are about to build. So this is what we'll be building, and I would agree and say that, hey, AppRite, I actually borrowed your color scheme and themes because it was so nice, so sorry for that. It was beautiful, so I couldn't resist myself. So we actually borrowed some of your theme, sorry for that, but hey, you are a good platform. So what we're gonna be doing is, in this one, we'll be using uh, this Next.js meets uh, AppRite. So I've already created app uh, or account on the app, right? So if you go up into this one, so it's a free account. Anybody can create that. There is no limitation or something like that. I have created this next test. We'll be creating a fresh account, fresh project for the app when we'll be walkthrough, doing the walkthrough. Now we can click on this. And all that I'm using here is the auth. Now notice here, they give you nice bandwidths and API keys and whatnot. So everything is pretty cool about them. Going to the auth, we have got a couple of users, just like you know me, one at the rate Gmail, two at the rate Gmail. It takes a couple of users to actually register and do it properly. So we'll be doing exactly that. Now this is the application that we'll be building. There are a couple of routes which are protected. So in case you don't know about that, so we'll be doing the route protection as well. So there's a profile route, which it doesn't allow me to visit. I have to be logged in user for that. So it's tracking all of that. Now, if I go ahead and click on the sign up, obviously I can do a sign up. Let's try with the three. So we'll go with the three at the rate gmail.com. Uh, no, that's, that's a full name. So I'll copy this, I'll paste it up here and I'll remove this one. We don't want that. And the one of the best thing about using the app, right, is all the authentication validation that is being set as a default in AppRite, they comes in. So there's a minimum criteria of having your password. You cannot just set it one, two, three, four. There are needs of eight characters. So that is a default of AppRite. So you have to follow that as well. That automatically comes. You can obviously overwrite, it's open source, uh, but I don't want to. Having a security and password, that's, that's good. So I'll just go ahead and, okay, did I type it wrong? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the most secure password in the world. We are using that. Let's create an account. As soon as you create an account, it actually, the way we have set it up is uh, we have actually directly redirected the user, created an account and redirected the user onto the profile page. So we are bringing in this three and the email ID from the app right itself. And these are hard coded. So we are just taking few values, but you can definitely take more values. I'll just hit on logout and show you the login flow as well. This is our login screen. So I can just go ahead and say, hey, this is a uh, three, if I can write that three at the rate gmail.com. Looks like my keyboard is not at perfect place. And we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's that's basic. And I'll just do the sign in. And there we go. The same information, I can hit a log out as well. There's no problem. Now, one of the thing that is absolutely amazing about this project is that we are maintaining the state of the user. So there is a state management also involved in this project. Now that's not Redux. If you want me to do the Redux part, so let me know in the comment section, I'll do a proper separate video probably an hour, hour long or two hour long video just on explaining what the Redux is and what the state management is. In this one, we are using the context. That is it. The context API in the React as well as Next.js is so much like underdog. It, I would say that. I would not hesitate to say that. It's so much more powerful that you always don't need to take out your big guns of Redux. You can just do everything with the context API. And that's exactly what you're doing here as well. 
I'll walk you through with the context API, how we'll create our own custom providers and custom hooks so that you can manage the user authentication and states as well on the front end side as well. And backend is all cooked up on the app, right? So we won't be touching too much on the backend part. This project is going to be serving a lot of other knowledge as well, which you should be having with the app, right? Uh, not app, right? The next JS as well. So there are a couple of routing information, parentheses, folder name structure, which are also there in the next JS. I'll walk you through with that. But hey, uh, go ahead and try this application on your own first. I'll definitely give you the link in the GitHub repo for that as well. Uh, but it's always a good idea to at least try out something on your own. Otherwise, I'm always here. So in the next video, or in the sequence of the next video, uh, we'll just walk you through. We'll start with a, a fresh project. We won't be using the previous one. So let's go ahead and get started with this one.